Hi, I'm Giulio Toffoli, project leader of Jaspersoft Studio. In this video, we will see how to work with data adapters in the context of a Jasper Reports I.O. repository. When we have a report template and we want to run this report with data, we need to acquire data from somewhere. In Jasper Reports, to acquire data, we use data adapters. A data adapter is just an object that resides inside the repository and is linked with our report by using a special property. When the report is executed, the data adapter fetches the data from the database or from any other connection and uh, allows just reports to fill the report with data. A data adapter, as we say, resides inside the repository. In order to configure it, we will use Jaspersoft Studio. A data adapter in particular allows us to connect to a DBMS to execute uh, SQL queries to get data out of a regular database, or we can use uh, other type of data, included XML files, CSV file, JSON, Excel, and so on. We can reference that files in a static way or we can access some remote URL to get this data. So let's see how this stuff works in Jaspersoft Studio and uh, let's get started. We are now in Jaspersoft Studio where we prepared a few reports uh, to test our data adapters. The first report is called orders and uh, it's supposed to execute an SQL query against uh, a Postgres database. Now, uh, Jasper Reports I.O. comes with uh, a few JDBC driver that allows to connect uh, to some databases and uh, Postgres SQL is, uh, is one of them. To create a data adapter, which is what we need in order to execute this report, there are several ways to proceed. Right, let's test this report first to verify that actually it does not get any data. I get a blank report uh, with no data here. We are still able to see all the other details though because uh, we configured our report to show all the details but not all the sections but not the details when there is no data. Again, okay, to create the data adapters, I would say there are several ways. Uh, let's start with the simpler one, which is import the data adapter from the data adapters list we have in Jaspersoft Studio. This data adapters in the repository explorer is where usually we configure data adapters when working with Jaspersoft Studio. Uh, that's not the case when we work in Jasper Reports IO because uh, until a data adapter is not in the repository, it cannot actually be used. In our set of data adapters in Jaspersoft Studio, we already have a Postgres uh, connection. So let's import that into our repository. I right click my Postgres connection. I export this to file. And I will save this inside our repository, in particular uh, in the folder data adapters. If we go back to our repository now, we see we have a new data adapter. I can double click if I want to modify it. And I can also test the connection. The connection works fine. So now it's time to connect this report with this data adapter. So this can be done from the root of our report in the properties in the field data default data adapter. Here we can specify which data adapter should be used to run this report. So we select the Postgres XML data adapter we just created. And uh, well, this, uh, the repository root is uh, this repository folder. So uh, Jaspersoft Studio is providing us a path that starts from the root of the project. But since this needs to be found by Jasper Reports IO, I will remove these two points here in order to have a absolute path in, uh, inside my, my repository and finish. So slash data adapter slash Postgres XML. 
let's save this report and preview now since i'm in jr in jasper reports io mode i'm going to see the report executed and uh, previewed inside the viewer provided by jasper reports io and now we see all our data uh, inside the report okay the second report we are going to use is called customers mysql it's called mysql because we are going to use um, mysql database uh, now mysql is a database for which uh, jasper reports io does not provide a jdbc driver and we picked this specific database on purpose so we can see how we can also add uh, uh, these uh, drivers inside the repository so from the data adapters this time i will right click uh, this folder and i will select new data adapter that's another way to create a data adapter we provide a name which could be something like uh, mysql data adapter and uh, here we have all the possible type of connection we uh, support inside jasper soft studio but some of them are actually not supported by jasper reports io that's because they are very specific to some environments in example an hibernate uh, type of connection it makes sense only when you are working with an application that is using hibernate in our case, we will just go with a database JDBC connection. Let's provide a name, for instance, sample DB. And here we need to provide the driver for uh, MySQL, which is, uh, well, we will use a compatible one, which is called MariaDB. Our database is called sample DB. And now we need to provide the credentials okay perfect we have created our new data adapter and uh, let's try to use it so in the customers mysql mysql i need to point to my data adapter again from the roots i will go to the default data adapter property and here i will select my uh, new data adapter okay let's remove the point point so we will have a path uh, an absolute path from the root of our repository but if we preview this now uh, what happened is that we get an error and in particular we get a class not found exception so let's see how to solve this a driver uh, not found exception arises when uh, Jasper reports IO tries to connect to a database with the information stored in our data adapter, but some classes, the driver in that case, are missing, so the operation fails. In order to add the driver for MySQL, MySQL in that case, uh, we will proceed in this way. We already have a jrinf folder with a context. In the case you don't have this, you can easily create this by creating a new other. And here you select a Jasper Reports IO execution context and you specify the root of your, of, of your repository. Now, since we already have it, there is, uh, it doesn't make sense for us to press it. This will create this context XML file that is uh, uh, it contains uh, some uh, special options that we can set for that particular environment. I already have it and uh, all, I already uh, configure my environment by adding the font that we have seen inside the orders uh, report. Okay, let's first create a folder where we can put our new JDBC driver, which is essentially a jar. So we create a new folder and for instance we can call this uh, lips it's uh, the name is actually up to you lips uh, sounds like a reasonable name and uh, in this folder we will drag our 
JDBC driver. Now I already downloaded the MariaDB JDBC driver. So I will drag this inside my lips. And I will copy this into my uh, repository. Now that we have our driver inside the repository, we will configure the context XML by adding this jar to the list of uh, jars that will make up the extended class path for my repository. Let's go now to the my SQL data adapter. And uh, we need to first save this. Okay, let's go back here and let's test now. And now the driver is actually found. So we are now able to run our report. So double click on my SQL and preview. Okay, and this was very fast. We now get all the data from our uh, report. Okay, this was uh, how we create a data adapter for a database that is uh, not uh, supported directly by Jasper Reports IO because the driver is not shipped. Uh, so we have seen how to use the context XML to extend the JDBC class, uh, the, the class path where we store our JDBC driver. Let's see now how we can use a, a local uh, CSV file to create a report. And for this, we will use our customer's report. This customer's report has been already uh, created uh, to use a, a, a CSV file, but we don't have a data adapters to run it. So let's create it. Again, okay, we'll create this inside our data adapters folder. We create a new data adapter. And uh, we will call this CSV data adapter. But we still don't have the data. So let's add first the data to our repository and then we will be able to select properly a file. So the data in this case could be stored inside a subfolder called data. And uh, also in this case, I already prepared some data for us, a CSV file, that we will copy inside our data folder. Okay, now we have our data. That's just a simple CSV file. Let's create the data adapter to properly read this file. Again, CSV data adapter. The type of my data adapter is a CSV file. And uh, we will locate our file, which is inside our repository, data adapters, data, customer, CSV. Okay. And automatically, JustPresto Studio read for us all the fields available inside this file. Uh, we will call this a CSV data adapter. That's just a name that um, we may want to have. And this is important since we have the column names inside the file, we click skip the first line if it's not selected by default. Okay, so our data adapter will read this CSV file in order to get the data when used by a report. So now it's time to use this inside customers. So in the root and uh, inside the default data adapter here. Actually, let's change the name of this of this uh, XML. So, okay, uh, perfect. So let's select the proper data adapter from the workspace. We get the CSV data adapter. Again, let's remove this and make this uh, path absolute. Finish, save this report and let's preview that. And we get our uh, 
our report out of these CSV files. Remember, double check that you have to keep the first line selected. Okay, now it's it's nice being able to read data from a CSV or a JSON file, but it's very uncommon that I have this data inside my my repository, in particular because I usually don't have access to it directly. It's much more useful if we can read data from a new URL. And uh, this is what we will do with our blog post report. We will use a remote data source. In particular, we will use a, a, a special a site that is uh, very convenient to uh, test remote services and uh, we can use this to uh, simulate a request to a particular URL that gives us back JSON. Okay, so this is actually the URL that we will invoke. We create a new data adapter and the data adapter in this case will be a JSON data adapter. So let's select JSON file. And here, well, let's uh, remote JSON data adapter. Instead of uh, specifying a path inside the repository, we will provide our URL, which I copied uh, a moment ago. Uh, so json placeholder.typeico.com slash post and click finish. Now we have a data adapter that is able to connect to a website, get a JSON and use this JSON to fill our report. So let's open the blog post. Uh, we did not set the data adapter. Again, let's change this. It should be blog post. Okay. Let's say this. Okay. Uh, I was saying we don't have any default data adapter here. So if we preview, we should not get any data. And here it is. The report is empty. Let's select our data adapter. But instead of uh, specifying it here, I want to show you another way of doing that. From preview, Jasper Studio is able to show me what are the data adapters available in my, in my repository. So from here, I can select my remote JSON data adapter. This is not just for preview and the JSON uh, and the Jasper Studio is uh, telling that me this will actually set for us that property we were manually setting before. Now we can see the data coming from the remote website. And if we go to the design, we see that Jasper Studio set this default data adapter for us. Okay, that's all uh, for the basic information about how to work with uh, data adapters. Um, I hope this was useful and see you the next time.